Okay, here's a video for 11.2. Remember, you can't take the 11.3 quiz until you get a 60% or greater on the 11.2. And if you follow along on this video, I really think that you will. Okay, so um, number one, practice prior knowledge and summarizing fill in the blanks. Um, these triangles, or we're talking about congruent right triangles. Congruent means same size and shape. And a right triangle is a triangle that has a right angle in it. So these triangles have the same size and shape. This is the symbol for congruent. In math, that means same size, and that means same shape. So it's the both of them together. There are three pairs of corresponding sides are congruent. There are three pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. Complete the congruent statement for the triangles. Circle the statement that names the congruent right angles. Okay. So, um, we know that AB is equal to DE. So, I'm just going to go ahead and mark it like that. Okay. Now we got to talk about the other side. So, what does that side seem to correspond to? Correspond just means matches up. Well, it matches up to that little one right there. So AC, and I know it matches up with this, but it's important how we name it. So since I named this AC, and I started with the 90 degree angle, I have to start with the 90 over here and put DF. If you put FD, it'll be wrong. <clears throat> and then the hypotenuse, those two correspond. And I'm going to name this one BC, and you might want to take a guess as to how you would name that one. I would name it EF. Angle A equals angle D. Uh, angle C is angle F. And angle B is angle E. Complete. Okay, hold on. I had to take screenshots of these in order to do this for you guys. All right. Congruence shortcuts for right triangles. Okay, if you did the lesson, you got introduced to these, and it said if the hypotenuse, remember that's the longest side of a right triangle, and the leg of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and corresponding leg of another right triangle, then the two triangles are congruent. So if I have myself, I always like to draw pictures, if I have myself two right triangles, their hypotenuses are the same, they're right, so they have a right angle. If I know either leg, like if I know this is this, that's enough to say they're the same. That's all this is saying. The leg leg, okay, here's the leg leg, if the legs of a right triangle are congruent to the legs of another right triangle, then the two right triangles are congruent. So if I have a right triangle, it has to be right. Okay, it has to have a right. And if this is this, and this is this, then um, that's enough to say that the two are congruent. Okay, um, the HA, so that's the hypotenuse angle. So this says if the hypotenuse, I'm just going to start abbreviating that with hype. If the hypotenuse and an acute angle of a right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and an and corresponding acute Angle of another right triangle, the two triangles are congruent. So on this one we have the hypotenuse and one of the two acute angles. That's enough. And the leg angle, so this one says if the leg and an acute angle of a right triangle and leg acute. So that just says, okay, if we have a leg and then one of the angles, uh, let's see, if a leg and one of the, let me read the whole thing, if the leg and an acute angle of a right triangle are congruent to the corresponding leg and acute angle of another right triangle, then they're congruent. Yes. 
Okay, fill in the blanks. Why is each right triangle congruence shortcut a special case of a triangle congruence shortcut? Okay. Um, all right triangles have a given pair of congruent angles. They're right angles. If you know the lengths of the two sides of a right triangle, you can use the Pythagorean theorem like you did in 9-1. find the third side. So if the two pairs are congruent, the third pair must be also. Okay, so if I know that this is 3, and this is 4, and that's 3, and that's 4, I know that that missing side must also be the same because you do the Pythagorean theorem with both of those, and in both of them you would get 5. <clears throat> okay, moving on to 5. So, okay, this is the one where I think it's really going to help you with the quiz. All right. So, if you remember way back to last year or even right before we left for our extended break, we reviewed these ways to prove two triangles congruent. Okay? So, these are real similar to the new ones that we just learned. Okay? So, um, this says... I can see I'd be confusing to fill this out, but I think I can explain it to you. So this says the hypotenuse leg theorem. Okay, so that's being illustrated. Um, let's see, where's, where do they illustrate the hypotenuse leg theorem? Okay, that's actually going to be this one, the HL. This is the hypotenuse leg theorem. And... Um, it is also, it doubles as also one of these, and we have to decide which one it is. You might pause the video and take a guess. Well, for the reasons that I just said, if you know two of the sides, you could get the Pythagorean theorem to get the third side, okay? So the HL theorem is also the side, 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 okay? Now the leg, leg theorem, where do you see two legs marked off? Right here is the LL. So this also has to be another one, right? So take a look at it. Um, which, these two triangles, which one of these, you might pause it and take a guess, which one of these does it match up with? Well, that would be the SAS. Side, and then the angle, and then the side, and the angles in between the two sides, remember? So this is also the SAS, and then we have the HA. So we will see. Here's one where we know the hypotenuse and an acute angle. So we also know the right angle, because it has to be a right triangle. So which one is that? That is the angle, angle, side. Remember the, the, uh, the side, in order to be ASA, the side would have to fall between the two angles. And since it doesn't, it's the angle, angle, side. And the LA theorem, okay, so for the LA theorem, we have a leg and an acute angle. And we have the right angle, so that's angle, side, angle. So all of those double as another one. Okay, moving on to number seven. Okay, um, then use the rule to solve each problem. Okay, the distance from a point to a line is the perpendicular, and that symbol is perpendicular segment that joins them. So what is the distance from C to line AB? Well, that would be 4. And your perpendicular line is, is CD right there. And what's the distance here? It's 1.5. OK. Perpendicular bisector. If a point lies on the perpendicular bisector, pardon the abbreviation, but uh, this video is getting a little long for me to upload to YouTube. Um, so if a point's on the perpendicular bisector of a segment, then it is equidistance from the end points of a segment. So a perpendicular bisector Okay, if I have, like, I'll draw it real quick for you. Maybe it's down here. They probably give you an example down here. Yeah, they do. Okay, this one is the perpendicular 
bisector, okay? Here, CD is the perpendicular bisector, and it does two things. Actually, no, it does three things. It makes a 90-degree angle here. It cuts that line in half, and the distance from any point on there to the end points, which is what we just said, is equal. So I could choose any point on there, and that is going to be that from the end points. So the converse of this, that is just if the point is equidistant from the end points, then it's on the perpendicular bisector of the segment. So if I know that this is 21 over here, that's enough for me to say that C is on the perpendicular bisector of AB. Okay, angle bisector theorem. If an angle lies on the bisector, abbreviated, of an angle, and it's equidistance from the two sides of the angle. So remember, an angle bisector cuts it in half. So if CD is an angle bisector, those are both 31, and this is equal to this. That's the relationship there. And this one is just the two switch. This is sides, and this is bisector. That's the relationship, though. These two equal these two equal. Okay, going on to number nine, hopefully. Do I have that one? Um, yeah, we kind of marked it up a little bit, but it says, what's the distance from C to B? I marked it on there. And what's the measure of DCR? I marked it on there. DCR is 31, okay? So another thing with, with naming angles, which is something we struggled with before we all left, I can't call this angle C, because I don't know if you're talking about that, I don't know if you're talking about that, or I don't know if you're talking about the whole thing. So when it's complicated like that, you have to use three letters, okay? So DCR is D, C, R. So the angle itself is the middle letter, okay? So I could also name it R, C, D. Okay, that's how you're going to name angles with this whole thing throughout the unit. So I really think that that'll be helpful for you. Uh, go take the quiz for this second section and hopefully get through.